Hi, welcome to the third video in the Common Concerns Digitization 101 series. My name is Caitlin Oyakun and I'm the Archivist Director at Densho. And I'm Michael Merriman, the Assistant Archivist here at Densho. In our previous videos, we've talked about setting up your digital workspace as well as your physical workspace for processing collections. And today we're going to talk about the actual equipment. So we will go over some of the scanning equipment that we use, pros and cons for each of them, and we'll do a little demonstration on how you do the actual scanning. So come join us. Hi everyone, we're back upstairs. Micah's going to show us a little, give us a little tour of the office, and we're gonna talk about the different sorts of scanning equipment we have upstairs. So we're gonna start out with just showing you what we have, and then we will do a more in-depth uh, discussion of how you actually scan. So, Micah, you want to show us what we have here? Yeah, so first here we have our Epson 12000 Expression XL. Uh, we have been using this style of scanner for about 10 years now. We have three of them here in the office. Uh, they're really great because the XLs are 11 by 17, so we can scan some really big stuff on here. And we also have a transparency lid, which allows us to scan uh, negatives and slides. So those are both really great boons for us as an organization. Um, we really consider these scanners to be like the workhorses of Denshow, and so we use them pretty much every day. Uh, they are a little expensive though, running about $4,000 per unit. So if your organization has a smaller scanner or you're looking to purchase a scanner, the eight and a half by 11 scanners that are closer to this yeah. size down here. You can see here. one of those down there on the bottom. Uh, are also really great and can uh, provide you with some really great options. Yeah, so I think next let's go and look at some digital cameras. So we've moved over to our copy stand station and Mike is going to talk to you about our copy stand setup and our DSLR camera. Yeah, so we have a DSLR Canon EOS Rebel T7i that we have mounted onto this adjustable arm. We also have a higher quality lens than what you get out of the box. And so we use this camera arm to photograph sort of three different kinds of things. We'll photograph three-dimensional objects when we get them once in a while. We'll photograph um, large sized objects that we can't fit on our flatbed scanners. And we also will sometimes do high volume scanning if we have like a large amount of oral history transcripts we're trying to process. We'll photograph those here. Uh, we, as you'll notice, have two LED light stands on either side of this table so we can we can put sort of like a spotlight on here and we'll turn off our overhead lights and close our blinds and you know do our best to control the lighting in this room but if we were trying to be totally professional we have like a whole camera set up with like umbrella lights and a backdrop but as we talked about before our scanner is our workhorse and so this is just sort of something that we've kind of cobbled together over the last decade we have options for background colors between white and black and that's kind of the amount of customization we got going on here. Yeah, like Micah said, we don't use it as much, but it's a really great option um, for when we need something beside the flatbed. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of that, the next stop on our tour will be the book drive. So here we are over at our book drive station. Um, Micah is going to explain this large piece of equipment to you, so take it away. Yeah, so we have a book drive here. It actually has a book cradle and a plaquedin that we use to photograph uh, bound objects like books. It's really great for smaller things like journals, uh, but we can also do large scale, large size books on it. We have two uh, cameras mounted on arms here that are adjustable they go up and down and so we can get in a little bit closer but we can also pull out so we can fill up this whole tray if we needed to we also have as you can see two led lights here that we also use we'll pull these back and turn them on when we're using the book drive and the cameras actually can get plugged directly into this computer here and it has a piece of software here by book drive that allows us to photograph from the computer and name everything on the computer. So it's a really uh, succinct system, straightforward for us to use. And we uh, 
use all of our bound materials with this. Yeah, and it's really allowed us to expand what we've been able to digitize just mm -hmm. because there are many items that cannot be scanned on the flatbed and would not be really effective to scan on a copy stand. So it's been really great to have this. Yeah. All right, so now that we've shown you the three main types of software equipment that we have or scanning equipment that we have, we will go into more, more specifics on uh, how to actually do the scanning. So now that we've talked about our equipment, Micah is going to show you how we scan on our flatbed. So uh, Micah, show us, you're gonna do some photos here, I see. Yeah, I've got some uh, photos pulled out that we are going to be digitizing. I have my metadata spreadsheet open where I'm cataloging a just a couple pieces of information as I go, just the scan numbers, the dimensions, the date and the tech information. And then I have on this screen, my uh, scanning software that we use here at Dencho. Your organization probably has its own scanning software that it uses, so I'm just gonna cover some basics about what we like about this scanning software and what you should look for in a scanning software if you don't already have one. But make sure you follow whatever your organization's guidelines and documentation on how to use your scanning software. So first thing, um, before we start scanning, I'm gonna make sure I put on our color separation guides. We have a grayscale and color, and so I always put those on our scanning bed. I always put the grayscale on top and the color on the bottom, and I make sure to get them snug to the corner so that way whenever I'm placing anything on the scanning bed, I have a lot of space because a lot of scanning trays have light leakage on the sides, and you wanna make sure that you're avoiding that, and this helps buffer it and also some scanning trays uh, chop off like an eighth of an inch on the edges. So you just wanna make sure you're not gonna lose any information. Next, I take the photograph and I lay it face down on the screen. I've already measured this, so I already know that it's five, uh, five by three and a half. And then you just gently close the lid and now for the scanning software itself, I always make sure that everything's set to our guidelines for photographs. We always scan at 48 bits per pixel. Uh, we can scan at 24, but we use that for documents. We prefer a higher resolution for our photos. And then we always make sure our scan DPI is a custom set so we can adjust it as needed for five inches. We always scan at 800. And then we always wanna make sure that in our outputs that we're actually scanning this as a TIFF file rather than a JPEG, because TIFFs do not compress. And so we have less chance of bit rot and any other issues that might arise from file issues. So I'll just go ahead and preview it so you guys can see what it'll look like. Yeah, and there's many types of scanning softwares out there. A lot of scanners will actually come with their own uh, version. You just, like Micah said, you want to check to make sure you have all these functionalities available mm -hmm. in whatever software you're using. Yeah, and so you'll notice on the screen here how I have this sort of spaced away from any of the edges. Uh, we'll want to make sure that this has enough edge on the bottom and the top so that when we go into our post-production process we can uh, straighten the image because you really don't need to worry about it while you're scanning if the image if the photo is placed perfectly straight because you can correct that in your post yes and we will talk about post scanning production in the next video yes. so stay tuned for that all right well that seems pretty easy and yeah Flatbeds are pretty straightforward as long, mm -hmm. once you get the, uh, the finicky things down, it should be a pretty smooth process. The major thing for us is always to remember to change the DPI, because mm -hmm. uh, it can change depending on the size of the object you're scanning. Yes. So now we are gonna talk a little bit more about how we work with the DSLR cameras. So Micah's gone over the basics of the flatbed scanner. So now we want to talk to you a little bit about the copy stand and the DSLR camera because it can be a little tricky. So mm -hmm. Micah, 
What steps do you take when you're doing this? So first off, what we usually do is we want to make sure that the camera has its white balance set. And so to do that, we have the room set up in the exact lighting that we want. So typically we'd actually turn off all of these overhead lights and turn on our spotlights. But since we're doing a video recording right now, we're not going to be doing those steps since you won't actually then be able to see me. You'll just see a giant glow coming from here. So once that's all set up, and then I would take a photograph of this white background that we already have set up, and then using the camera setup information, I'd actually make the white balance set on the camera. You should follow the guidelines to your camera to set that up. And once that is all done... Well, we and I will just speak from experience. Uh, I have forgotten to set the white balance before, and it ends up with a really poor, uh, color quality image that you get. So you definitely want to do this before you start. And even during the day, lighting can change. And so if there's a significant change in your ambient light, you might wanna redo your white balance throughout the day. Yeah, especially do it before every session you start. And if you take any sort of a long period break, make sure you redo it. So like if you break for lunch and come back, definitely redo it. So now that we have our white balance set, we lay down our color separation guides, just like we would on the scanner. Put one on either side of uh, where the photo or where the object would be going, that would be going on here. And it's nice if we're doing high, like if we're doing a large volume of something that's all the same size, they act as a nice guideline to placing those items down. But today we're just gonna be taking a quick photo of a framed photo that we can't actually pull out of its frame because it's nailed in the back. And since we're returning it to the owner as is, we're not gonna be removing those nails. So I'd lay this down here and I'd adjust the camera height to make sure it is exactly the right height so that we have a nice wide uh, white border around it. And I'd take a focus shot. So I'm not actually taking a whole shot, I'm just using the camera's focus ability to make sure that this is in focus and then switch back to manual. And we leave our cameras on manual whenever we're doing photos to make sure that the camera lens doesn't try to autofocus on something else and change our actual focus depth. And then we use a clicker here so that we can stand back away from the image, the photograph, and take a nice shot without our bodies casting any additional shadowing that would mess with the white balance that we just set up. Yeah, great. Yeah. So that is everything on how we use our copy stand. Yeah, and I mean, that really goes over the basics of the DSLR camera in general. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna quick run over to the book drive just to kind of show you what it looks like in action, but we won't talk much about the camera setup there since it's very similar to what we do with the copy stand. So yeah. we will move on over to the book drive. All right, we're back at our books drive station and Micah has prepped a book in here for you. Um, again, pretend like we've already done the same like white balance to both cameras and that the lights are on and the lighting is correct. But we just wanted to kind of show you what the book drive looks at, look in action, even though we know most people won't have one of these, but this is the options for what you can do with them. Yeah, so we, pulled out a directory, it's in here right now, for uh, Thule Lake. And you'll note that we have a bit of artboard back here helping support this side of the binding because it's a little too thick to just be laying in here without that extra support. And so if we had taken a picture and we've been using the computer, the next thing we do is we'd lift up the placard and flip the page and we'd lower it back down and we take the next shot and pick it up, flip it and keep going like that, uh, which is a really nice boon compared to the flatbed scanner is the photo, the cameras take really quick photographs and so we can move pretty efficiently through a book. Uh, the, what are the downsides, Caitlin? <laughs> The downsides, to me really the downsides with these are just the trickiness of getting both cameras set up with the appropriate lighting, which again just kind of goes to show that uh, camera work can be more difficult than you would think in terms of the lights. Yeah, 
And one other thing is, especially with the book drive, you or and the coffee stand even, is you have to make sure after you've finished photographing like the whole book, you go through and double check that you actually got all of your pages before you get into your po post -pro processing step to just make sure you didn't miss anything. I've definitely accidentally had two pages stick together and not realized it when I've turned a page. Yeah, and again, this is a pretty gentle way of handling books, but if you're working with anything very delicate, you always want to remember to, you know, be gentle with it. Even the book drive, which is meant to hold books in its cradle, can still damage things if you're not careful. So anyway, we just wanted to show you this fun tool that we've uh, been able to acquire, and it has really helped us over the years expand on the number of items that we've been able to scan. Yeah. So thank you. And that's it for this video. The next video, we will be talking about what you're going to do with all of those digital files once you have scanned them. Thanks. Bye.